So tonight, we're on a little bit of a different type of a snowmobile-related adventure. So earlier today, I went to rebuild the track shocks for Patty. Uh, the front track shock, the long one on the extra 12, it was perfectly serviceable. The rear, not so much. So the rear shock, the shaft has a bunch of pitting, as you can see there. It's pretty pretty bad. Hopefully that's in focus. Uh, it's through the chrome, and it's right where the seals run at full extension. So you know it's going to see that a bunch of times. You know, anytime your skis are off the ground, that's going to be at full extension and trying to rip up the seals, which is just, just going to cause an oil leak and cause the gas to leak out. So... I have some chrome shafting that I bought from McMaster Car. I'll put the part number for McMaster Car down here. But it's, as far as I can tell, exactly the right stuff. It's either 1040 or 1045 steel shafting with a polished chrome plating. Um, I believe that's what Fox used originally. And it's going to be a lathe project, obviously. So uh, let's go get at that. Oh, but before I do... Please don't ask me to make a shaft for you. You can go out to eBay and you can buy these. So if you go to the Polaris Online Parts Catalog, you can dig up all the way down to the part number level for this shaft or any other component of the shock. You can search it out and you can buy it on eBay. Why am I not buying one on eBay? Well, that wouldn't make a very good video, would it? So let's get machining. Step one is to cut the shaft to length. I didn't even measure it. I don't care what it measures as long as the new shafting is long enough. Uh, I just match them up, butt them up, get the length right, good enough. Do you want to make sure it's square? Although you could square it later on the lathe. Perfect. So your next question is, what size threads do you use? Well, they're obviously fine thread, and we know this is 3 8 so it should be a 3 8 24. And it, it does, it goes right in. Uh, if you don't own one of these thread checkers, they've got a male and female side for each of these for metric and English, uh, go buy one on Amazon. I think there's a link in the description. Uh, so let's see, the next one is the other end, the big end that the eyelet goes on. I believe that's 7 16 24. And it sure is. So now we know how to set up the lathe to make these. All right, so now it's the detail work. So I mic'd this and it's uh, 429 and a half, 429 and a half thousandths. So that's the big end. It's just a little under 7 16 uh we'll measure the small one when we get there the other detail i want to point out is they put a little gutter down to the minor diameter at the end of each thread and it's real narrow basically it, it almost looks like on the 3 a side like they just you know quit threading just cut out the half nut and let it spin a revolution um they definitely use like a round bit here on the eyelet side so we will have to put that in as well. Nice place to stop your threads when you hit that. And we are going to single point them by hand. So you'll want to see that. Oh yeah, and there's a radius in here. No, actually that's an undercut at the end there too. But uh, we'll probably have to put that in as well. So there we go. All right, it's time to get machining. So when I get to uh, these threads and this surface here, well, I'll mic those so I know what size to cut to there as well. Can you see those pits? Boy, they are really bad. Really bad. So I've had some people ask for like a split screen shot while I'm machining. They want to see what my hands are doing. I usually have uh, just this camera here on, just showing what the tool bit's doing. Make, showing the chips. But, uh, yeah, I'll show you my hands. So here it goes. 
I'll try to talk you through this a little bit, at least on one of the threads. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the end of the shaft. I guess the first thing I'm going to do is drop a wrench on the floor. All right, so that's the end of the shaft. Now, we know we want to go 7 16 down. So I'm going to set up my indicator and put it to zero, which is what you just watched me do. I have the tool back away, so that's 438 thousandths. 400 and 38. Now, I'm moving my indicator because I can't count that well I possibly while I'm machining. So what I'm doing is I'm setting it up so that when I hit this zero, I'm at my 438 thousandths. So I got, you know, most of a turn, and then I'm gonna come around and hit this zero. I'll be right back. I gotta change. These glasses are too strong. All right, I'm back with some less strong cheaters. Better for this distance. First thing I wanna do is touch off. Oh, I'm touching. Back it out a little. That's not a problem. All right, I just touched. It doesn't matter that I overshot. So over here off camera, we know that shaft is 500 thousandths, and I want to go 437. So 0 0.500 minus 0.437. That's uh, the diameter I'm shooting to. Oh wait, I'm going to 429. 0 0.500 minus 0.429. So 71 thousandths, so 35 thousandths total cut. So that's not a lot. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take about, I want to go, I want to get under the chrome, so I want to go about 15 thousandths. I'm going to dial it in, give or take 15 thousandths. We're going to take a cut to the depth, I'm going to mic it. This is a 7 16 is really short, I'm not even going to try to do a power feed. micrometer action now. So we're at four, about 468. So we got about another 40 thousandths to go. Dial that up to the 25 thousandths mark. Take another cut. So we've taken off 25 thou per side, total of 50 on the diameter. And yeah, so that's like 447. Four forty-eight. So that means I got 20 thou per side to take off. And a, a thou on the diameter doesn't matter on the external of a thread. All 
All right, Get the old mic. Just about perfect on 429. It's like 429 and six tenths. Good enough. All right, next stop, I need to put the groove in the end here. I gotta think about that for a second. All right, so what I've decided to use is this diamond tool, DNMG, I believe. The other tool I was using was a CNMG, and it'll make a good enough uh, groove for what we're doing. We're gonna groove it about 30 thousandths deep. I looked it up, and the 7 16 24 should be about 27 thousandths deep. That extra 3 thousandths, that won't hurt a thing. That looks about right. Next step is threading, so I need to get set up for that. Okay, so I've got the lathe down in low gear for this threading op. Coloring this so I can take a scratch cut and see how many threads per inch I have. Basically just to verify the setup on the lathe. I know I'm set up at 20 threads per inch. So now I gotta come in and touch off just lightly. All right, we just touched. Now over here I'm gonna engage the half nut when it hits a, well I could probably do any line, but I'm going to do it with the line with a number on it. There we go. So I stopped in that gutter, so my carbide it's not touching anything, it's hanging in the air. And check with our little gauge here. And the threads line up. So now, I like that for a zero, so now I'm gonna re-zero my slide here. Okay, spin it back, back it up. Go back to my zero, and first cut, we'll go 10 thousandths deep. We may back that down as we get closer in. Remember, the first cut is actually moving the least metal because you're on the point. As you get closer in, you're more on the sides of it, moving more. Back it out, pull it out, real nice. All right, another seven and a half thou. This will be 25 thou per side, 25 thou deep groove. Looks like we're almost there. All 
All right, here's a little option I'm going to take. I am right there. Right there. Oh, I'm going to chamfer that end thread first. I'm going to use the edge of the threading insert. Speed it up a little bit. All right, so those threads look craptastic. So what I am gonna do is use a die to finish this. When you get it that close, the die cuts really easy. All right, that's not bad at all. Just blow the chips off there quick. Moment of truth. Oh yeah, perfect. Real good. Could not be happier. All right, back to the other side. So the second half is really the same as the first. Obviously, I got that longer shoulder you saw, but all the operations are the same, so we're going to jump to the end. All right. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Machine work's done. Blades off, all the machine tools are put away. Feels good to make my own parts. So uh, here you go, obviously the old shaft and the new shaft. Pretty good match, I'd say. I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, why'd I do it? Well, just because I've done other machine shop videos and the viewers have really enjoyed them. I've made like snowmobile drive shafts and stuff like that. People like it. So uh, I'm not trying to sell you shock shafts. You can go buy them on eBay and I would charge you about four times what the eBay guy would charge you if you really had to have one from me. So please go buy them on eBay. Um, but with that said, I want to say thanks for watching. Uh, please hit subscribe. This is not one of my normal videos. Normally the videos are projects like Patty here behind me or going to see people's collections or going to swap meets, that kind of thing. But uh, every once in a while I like to throw one of these in. So uh, hit subscribe. And uh, if you really like the channel, check out the Patreon. Uh, huge thanks to the patrons from Patreon. You can see their names up there. They give us a little contribution each month. And in return, well, obviously they get their names on the screen, two screens worth. And uh, they also get to see all the videos early and ad free on Patreon. Uh, that's a pretty big bonus, ad free, I think. So uh, anyway, anyways, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you at the swap meets. Here we are the next day. New shaft is in the shock. Old pitted up shaft is right there. So uh, I did uh, new seals in the head, gets a new O ring on the IFP, uh, new oil, set the IFP depth, put it together, charge it. And there we go. Good to put in the sled.